Hi Bartonella buddies! Today I thought I would just shoot the shit with you. Pew pew! And yes, since I've been sick and disabled for two years and basically haven't gone anywhere, if we're gonna shoot the shit, I'm gonna do full glam. So as a sick person, I feel like we all have encountered not sick people who don't know the right things to say or have said things that are really insensitive or annoying or off base. But today I kind of want to talk about what annoying things sick people say to each other. But before I get into that, I do want to say that people often ask me, like, let me know if there's anything I can do for you. And it's sometimes hard to think of what people can do for me, especially if they're not here in my house. But if you want to help my channel out, one of the best ways is by sharing my videos in relevant Facebook groups. I can't do that because that's seen as self-promoting, but if you do it, then it's not self-promoting. So if you're in an interstitial cystitis group, then maybe you can share my interstitial cystitis video and just write a couple sentences about like why it's a good video so that people are more inclined to click on it. Or if I have a video on mast cell activation syndrome that you found really helpful, maybe you can share that in a mast cell group for me. So these are some of my pet peeves that sick people say to me. And just a disclaimer, I might have done these exact same things to other people. And if I've done these to you, I'm, I'm really sorry. And if you've done these things to me, I'm not mad at you. I don't hold it against you. I don't know about you, but with this illness, my fuse is so short that it's microscopic. So when Piper gets really frisky and like wants something from us, we call her a frisky biscuit or frisky bee for short. And for me, I'm a cranky bee, but the bee doesn't really stand for biscuit. This one's going to be a sassy video, so buckle up, Bartonella buddies. So my first pet peeve is when people tell me, you're so lucky. I think earlier on in my illness, this bothered me more saying you're so lucky because I had a really hard time seeing past my own illness. Now that I've been sick for so long and I'm more aware of other people's illnesses and how they present, I can unequivocally say that yes, I do feel very lucky that I do not have psychiatric or cognitive symptoms. I am so lucky to have my mom. But back when I first got sick and I had lost half of all foods to eat, I reacted to almost every single medication I put down my throat. I couldn't stand, still can't, for more than 15 minutes a day. And people would say, you're so lucky that you don't have XYZ. I really didn't feel lucky. I remember early on in my illness, there was this woman, I was getting an IV treatment, and I told her that I didn't have really sense sensi sensitivity. And she was like, oh, you're so lucky. And I was like, am I? So I think those three words, or four, if you're not using... The contraction. <laughs> you got to be a little careful with them because just because they don't have one symptom doesn't mean they don't have all these other symptoms that are actually worse. And it's definitely not a competition. None of us are lucky. And sure, some of us are luckier than other ones and we're all luckier in different ways, but none of us are lucky. We're actually all the unlucky ones because we're all the ones whose Bartonella has effed them up instead of just clearing it or managing it like most people do. So the second one pisses me off so bad that I don't even have to qualify it or be nice about it when people online tell me that I probably have Lyme disease. Okay. The whole reason I made this channel is because I don't have Lyme disease. Bartonella, it needs its own spotlight and it can be just as disruptive to the immune system. It can be just as disruptive to your entire life. It actually can be transmitted through more vectors than Lyme disease. I'm not trying to make it a competition between Bartonella and Lyme disease, which actually is one of the other ones I'm gonna talk about later. And people will say, oh, well, Bartonella rarely comes on its own, meaning if you have Bartonella, you probably have Lyme. If you read the scientific literature, you will find many case reports and other types of studies by Dr. Breitschwert and his team showing that these people just have Bartonella and that they're very sick from it. So if you tell me I probably have Lyme disease, do you want to take this outside? I am 93 pounds of anger. The next one is there seems to be sometimes a competition online as to whether Bartonella, Lyme, Babesia, or mold is 
the worst. And honestly, pending more research, this discussion is futile. We honestly don't know the real prevalence of these infections, and that's because you need good direct testing for all of those infections, and while we are slowly making our way there in terms of the science, we're not there yet. We also have to recognize that all of these illnesses are very individual, and so for one person, Lyme might be their worst infection, even though they have Bartonella at the same time. And a person with just Bartonella can be as sick as someone with two or more infections. It's not a competition between the infections. It's not a competition about how many infections you have. They all freaking suck. And that's about it. The saying goes, if you have a brain, you have a bias. And we all have brains, hopefully. And obviously we all have our own biases based on what's affected us most. I don't talk a lot about mold, babesia, and Lyme on this channel because I don't have those things. So of course my bias is towards thinking Bartonella is important, but I would never go online and say that Bartonella is more important or more of a problem for someone than any of those other things I've listed. So what I do like to focus on is that Bartonella can be a problem without any other co-infections and Bartonella can be debilitating and disabling without any other co-infections. And that is true. Okay, and another one of my pet peeves is why don't you try LDN? Or why don't you try Zizol? If you've been following along with my story, I am approved for Zolaire. I have tried Gleevec or Imatinib, which is a chemotherapy, a less toxic kind of chemotherapy, but a chemotherapy nonetheless. And one of my doctors is working on rituximab for me. These are pretty heavy duty drugs. You don't really jump straight to them. Aldean, Zizol, those were some of the first thing I tried. I'm on 175 milligrams of Benadryl a day just to eat. That's enough to knock out a horse. I am no longer in mast cell 101. I was in mast cell 101 almost two years ago. I wish my mast cells were like, I won't grow up. I won't grow up. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. But no, they're like, I want to get a PhD in this shit. Another one of my pet peeves is people telling me what I should or shouldn't do. Ever since I came out of the womb, I have been someone who doesn't like to be told what to do, especially from people who I deem as not having jurisdiction over my life. It's not that I have had a problem with authority. I've had a problem with non-authorities thinking they have authority. Random people online who I have no relationship with whatsoever are like, be careful with benzos, be careful with exosomes. It's like, are you my mom? And even if you are my mom, which you're not because my mom's right here. Hi. I'm a 27 year old woman. I can do what I want. Let me just say a little word about the benzos. Benzos can be addictive. Benzos come with their risks. At the same time, one milligram of Valium, which is an extremely low dose of Valium, once kept me from going into the ER during COVID with an illness that people don't even believe in, and I would have had to go into the ER without my mom. So, I'm choosing the Valium. There's also plenty of literature and clinical evidence that benzos are really effective and really helpful in those with mast cell activation syndrome. Now, that doesn't mean I'm pushing benzos. You don't have to take them. But for me, it's literally taken my pain down from a suicidal level of pain to a non-suicidal level of pain. And it has kept me out of the ER. Because I feel this way, I feel like maybe some of you do too. And when I need advice, that's when I'll ask for advice. And other than that, I just need support. And I feel like a lot of us sick people probably feel the same way. Let me know in the comments if you feel that way too. So anyway, I hope you know that this video was really just to blow off some steam. I'm sure we all at some point feel like we need to blow off some steam. So I hopefully didn't offend any of you. And I know that when people make suggestions to me, they have the best intentions and they're just trying to help. And as I said in the beginning of this video, I've probably done some of these same things as well. So. Yeah, it is the thought that counts, but also at the same time, for Christmas, do you really want another fruitcake? Frisky Bee, or more like Sleepy Bee right now, and Cranky Bee are wishing you a longer fuse in 2021 and lots of support. Bye, Bartonella buddies!
Look at how pretty this is. It's like a disco ball on my eyes.